what are the pros and cons of the Affordable Care Act? If you are looking at health insurance and you've thought about looking at a policy on the marketplace through the Affordable Care Act, but you don't really know what it is or how it all works, let's talk about it. That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Side note, if you are doing some kind of term paper on the Affordable Care Act and health policy, this is not the video for you. So you may wanna check out some other videos on the side and try to get more information for your term paper. That way, this is much more going to apply to people that are actually looking for health coverage. Hi, my name is Joe Hutchison and I am an independent health and Medicare advisor with Founders Life and Health. We are based here in beautiful St. Louis, Missouri, but we help people all over the country and our services are free of charge to you. Today, we are gonna be talking about the Affordable Care Act. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of it. And at the end, I'm gonna share a couple hints on how you can save a little bit of money if you're looking at an ACA plan. So let's start with some jargon clarification. ACA, what is that? It, it, it stands for Affordable Care Act, but it is the same thing as Obamacare. It's the same thing as the marketplace policy. So you'll hear people kind of interchangeably is that a word? Use those words. And some people think that they don't have Obamacare when they actually do because they have an ACA plan or vice versa. So it's all the same thing. So what is ACA coverage? It's basically a platform that is run by the government to help subsidize people that are looking for affordable health insurance that maybe either don't have coverage at all, don't have group coverage, or uh, are looking for some kind of affordable options. And here's something really important. What it is not is government-run health care. These health care plans are not run by the government. They are subsidized by the government, but they are actually run by private insurance companies, the, what they call carriers. So small all the way up to large companies can hold ACA policies and provide you your health care coverage, but the subsidies to offset the cost come from the government. It's not government-run health care. So let's get right to it. What are the pros of an ACA plan? Well, pro number one, and this is by far the biggest, is that an ACA plan is going to cover pre-existing conditions. So if you have a chronic condition, if you have diabetes, if you've had a heart attack, even if it's something all the way down to just having asthma, an ACA plan is going to cover all of those things. So all of your pre-existing conditions will be taken care of by a doctor. Another piece of that regarding pre-existing conditions is that you cannot be denied coverage because of a pre-existing condition, but also they can't basically kick you off of your policy because a, a condition that you have is costing them too much money. They have to provide you coverage. Pro number two for an ACA plan is that an ACA plan is going to cover things like mental health services and addiction services. So I have several clients that struggle with anxiety and depression. It's very common. And um, on any other plan, if you have a short-term medical plan or some of these other kind of like private outside of ACA policies, they're not gonna cover mental health services. So this will include that. If that's something that you really need or something that's important to you, I would encourage you to look at an ACA plan first. Pro number three for looking at an ACA policy is that your prescriptions are also gonna be included in that plan. You don't have to get additional coverage outside of your policy for prescriptions. I think a lot of times what happens, especially with some of the short-term medical plans, if they don't cover prescriptions, is that you basically just get like a discount card where you can go to your pharmacy and just get a discount. But this is gonna be comprehensive prescription coverage so that no matter what type of prescription that you're on, you will have coverage for that. A couple other real quick pros to an ACA plan is that if you are a dependent, you can be covered under your family's plan until you're 26. And then at that point, you can go and get your own plan, but you have all the way until the end of your 25th year to be covered on your family's plan. Also, preventative care is covered with no copay. So just going to see the doctor and doing all the preventative services, there's gonna be no copay for those services. Also, like I said, coverage cannot be dropped because you're sick and there are no annual limits on, on your care. So it used to be that once you hit a max, say it was a million dollars or so, then the insurance company was not gonna cover you anymore. That's no longer the case. 
Okay, what are the cons of an ACA plan? Well, con number one, honestly, is just that the marketplace can be very confusing and overwhelming for people trying to enroll. If you don't speak health insurance and you don't exactly know how all of the deductibles and co-pays and co-insurance and how all of that works, sometimes you can get hit with a nasty surprise. And I know a lot of people just when they're on the marketplace trying to shop for a policy, they get overwhelmed. There's a lot of information. You don't really know what any of it means or how it's going to affect you. So it can be cumbersome and it can cause a lot of people to just give up. Best way, honestly, to work through that is to work with a healthcare advisor like myself or somebody in your area or really anybody that you feel comfortable with. Our services, again, are free to you. So we can help you work through the marketplace, look at what all the plans are, how it's going to affect you, how it's gonna cost you, the coverages that it's going to bring you, and we can help decode a lot of that. Con number two on an Obamacare plan is really going to be if you are a higher earner, the subsidies might not be available for you. So if you make more than 400% of the federal poverty level, and that changes every single year, then you might not have subsidies available to you. Now in, in this market, I would still say take a look at it because in the last year, because of COVID, a lot of things have changed, so there probably may still be some subsidies for you. And if you, again, if you do need some help looking through that, you can talk to a healthcare advisor to have you work through that. But con number two is it might not be affordable if you are a higher earner. Con number three to an ACA plan is just really when you can enroll. So open enrollment for a ACA plan is going to be between November 1st and December 15th, which is a pretty short window. So if you don't have coverage currently, or if you are on an ACA plan, but you want to switch to another one, you have to wait until that window of time to be able to do it. Unless, and believe me in health insurance, there is always an unless, unless you have a qualifying life event, then you can actually enroll in an ACA policy outside of that window of time. So what is a qualifying life event? Well, there are four kind of main ones. One is if you lose your coverage, if you lose a job, if you have creditable coverage and you've lost it, that is a qualifying life event. They will allow you to shop for a plan. The next one is called change in household. So basically that's if you get married, if you get divorced, if there's a death in the family, if you have a baby, that would qualify as a qualifying life event as well. Another would be a change in residence. And really that just means if you're moving and you're moving out of the zip code that you're in into a different zip code. And the reason that is, is because different plans are available in different zip codes. So they have to kind of do that blanket wide. Even if I'm moving just to the zip code next door to me, it's still a qualifying life event. So if any kind of move into a different zip code is going to allow you to shop for a new plan. There are a couple other things that can happen. Things like just, losing your income, you maybe not didn't lose your job, but your income went down by half, or um, being released from incarceration. Those types of things are also qualifying life events and you can look, shop a policy. As promised, I have three helpful hints as well on how to save a little bit of money on your ACA plan if that's what you're shopping. Helpful hint number one is to look at a higher deductible plan your monthly premium is gonna be a whole lot lower. So if you're shopping a plan that maybe has an $8,000 or a $9,000 a month deductible annually, but then what you can do with some of that savings is get yourself an accident plan. So what an accident plan is gonna do is it's gonna be a, a much smaller monthly payment and it will cover that deductible. So say you have a $9,000 deductible, which is pretty high and you get in a car accident, God forbid. That accident plan is going to cut you a check for the amount of the deductible, and that way it's covered. So it's not going to be something where you can kind of chip away at the deductible through the accident plan. It's gonna be there just in case the worst thing happens, but you will have that extra piece of coverage so that you're not gonna be in a pickle if you get yourself in an accident. Helpful hint number two on how to save a little bit of money on an ACA plan. The ACA plans are divided into metal categories. Bronze is the lowest, usually the, the least expensive on a monthly basis with the higher deductibles. Then there are silver plans and then there are gold plans, which are obviously going to be lowest deductible, also highest premium. 
So, but there are also what they call catastrophic plans. So if you qualify for a catastrophic plan, it's gonna be even cheaper than a bronze plan. It's basically gonna be bare bones coverage that's going to protect you in case of worst case scenarios. So there aren't gonna be a lot of bells and whistles. You're not gonna be able to go see your doctor for, you know, like a $5 copay or anything like that. But the, the option is there that is um, a little bit under what a bronze policy would be. So when you're shopping those plans, make sure you look at that as well. Helpful hint number three is that not everybody knows this, but medical bills can be negotiated. So sometimes it's easiest to negotiate that before you're gonna have a procedure, but it can also happen after you have a procedure. If you get a big bill for something that you had to have done, you had to have surgery, or um, there was maybe a trip to the emergency room and you got a big bill for it, those can be negotiated. So keep that in mind. Not everybody knows that. Sometimes people get the bill, they just think it is what it is, but a lot of times they can negotiate that cost down. Hopefully that helps. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have more questions, as always, feel free to reach out.